Stop blocking the Holy Spirit. John 14 verse 16 And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. We are children of a heavenly Father who always provides for his children. He is always ready to help his children. The Word of God says that He is more than capable of helping. When Jesus Christ was nearing the end of His time on earth, He told His disciples that He wouldn't leave them alone. He promised that they would have an advocate, someone to comfort, support, stand up for them, speak to them, vouch for them and live within them. This comforter and advocate is the Holy Spirit. He is the paraclete, here to guide us onto God's path and shape us into his likeness. We are not alone. Living a Christian life by our own strength is impossible. It doesn't matter how morally good we are as people, we need the Holy Spirit in our lives to work with the Lord and to live holy and upright lives. He is as essential to us as the air we breathe. The Holy Spirit wants to help you. We've all faced situations where we needed someone's help. Sometimes our brothers and sisters lend us a hand, which is great, but there are moments when we need help and no one is available. There are indeed situations in life where only the Holy Spirit can provide the help you need. There are times when you may have thoughts or struggles that are deeply personal, or perhaps you can't find the right words to express them. It could be hard to share these feelings with others, or maybe you feel that no one else would understand. In these times, you can always turn to the Holy Spirit for comfort and guidance. As the all-knowing God, the Holy Spirit understands all our thoughts, feelings and experiences. You can share your deepest worries, fears and struggles with the Holy Spirit and seek His guidance and help. Our Lord assures us that the Holy Spirit will always be with us and will stay with us forever. The psalmist declares in Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. The Holy Spirit embodies this psalm. Described as our strength, the Holy Spirit empowers us to endure hardships, face trials, and overcome obstacles that we cannot manage on our own. As an ever-present help in trouble, the Holy Spirit is constantly with us, offering comfort, wisdom, and guidance in challenging times. The Holy Spirit doesn't only show up in times of trouble. He is consistently present, always ready to assist us, to convict us of our sins, and to lead us towards repentance and growth in our spiritual life. Unfortunately, we as believers sometimes get in the way of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. Let us look at how we sometimes do this. Number 1. Sin blocks him from working our life. Sin, in its many forms such as dishonesty, envy, pride, lust, greed and anger, is a critical barrier that can disrupt the relationship between a person and the Holy Spirit. When we succumb to such behaviors that contradict God's laws and moral code, we create a spiritual conflict with the Holy Spirit who resides within believers. These unconfessed and unrepented sins essentially grieve the Holy Spirit, as they go against God's holy nature and His design for us. The Holy Spirit's work is hindered because sin opposes the purity, truth, 
and love that he embodies and desires to cultivate within us. Light and darkness cannot reside together. Life and death cannot reside together. And sin and the Holy Spirit cannot dwell together. Ignoring or rationalizing such behaviors without acknowledging them as sins before God, seeking His forgiveness, and turning away from them, repenting, leads to spiritual stagnation or even regression, or a better term maybe, backsliding. The truth is, as human beings we have a proclivity, a tendency of ignoring or rationalizing or even justifying sin. We as human beings can even self-deceive ourselves and we can even talk ourselves into not viewing what the Bible clearly states, a sin as a sin. We will say that is not really a sin. Or, I have been behaving this way for years and I'm still here, it's not that bad. Brothers and sisters, do not get to a point where you are justifying sin or comfortable in it. Sin is sin. The Bible is dogmatic and uncompromising about sin. The Bible does not sugarcoat sin or dance around it. And in the same way, we too must have the same attitude towards sin. Sin is sin. Don't make excuses for it. Unconfessed sin is like a wall that blocks the free flow of the Holy Spirit's influence, guidance and empowerment in our lives. We may start to feel a sense of distance from God, a loss of peace or a lack of spiritual growth. This could also impact our understanding of God's Word, prayer life, and ability to bear spiritual fruits such as love, joy, peace, and patience. However, the Holy Spirit, in His profound love and patience, does not abandon us in this state. Instead, He convicts us of our wrongdoing nudging our conscience and illuminating our understanding to recognize our sins. He prompts us towards confession and repentance, which involve not just acknowledging our sins to God, but also making a sincere effort to change our ways. 1 John 17 verse 7 to 9 But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Indeed, the Bible assures us in 1 John 1 verse 9 that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This powerful promise provides us with a profound sense of hope and assurance. Even when we stumble and fall into sin, we have a loving God who is willing and ready to extend His forgiveness to us. It doesn't mean that He condones sin, but His love and mercy towards us surpass our transgressions. The key lies in confession, which is more than merely acknowledging our sins. It involves sincere remorse, taking responsibility for our actions, and expressing the desire to change. When we confess our sins with a contrite heart, God, in His infinite mercy, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. This act reinstates us into a right relationship with the Holy Spirit. God does not hold grudges or keep a record of our confessed sins. He erases them, setting us free from the guilt, shame and burden that sin brings. Our slate is wiped clean, 
and we are given a new opportunity to walk in the light, led by the Holy Spirit. This is not because we are deserving, but because of God's grace and mercy. There may be times when you might feel overwhelmed by your sins, fearing you are destined for hell or have lost your salvation. However, feelings and thoughts can be deceptive and aren't always in line with God's truth. It's crucial to shift focus from our feelings and human thoughts to the unchanging Word of God. God's Word reassures us of His unfailing love and His promise to forgive us if we genuinely repent and turn from our sins. Remember, God's forgiveness is complete and total. Removing our sins as far as the East is from the West, as we repent and accept God's forgiveness, we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in righteousness and remain in His loving embrace. As we confess and repent, we experience God's forgiveness, restoring our relationship with Him and opening up space for the Holy Spirit to work within us again. Consequently, we are once again in tune with His divine guidance, leading us to a path of spiritual growth and maturity, and without the Holy Spirit, we are essentially alone in our journey of life. As believers, it is indeed vital that we take intentional steps to eliminate anything that hinders the Holy Spirit's work in us. This could mean addressing and confessing our sins, getting rid of unhealthy habits or relationships, overcoming negative attitudes or letting go of pride and self-dependence. These obstacles not only grieve the Holy Spirit, but also stunt our spiritual growth. Taking the time to regularly examine our lives in light of God's Word, seeking His guidance and making the necessary changes to align our lives with His will, ensures us that we remain receptive to the Holy Spirit's work. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not merely an option or addition to our Christian lives, but an essential element we need Him far more than we may realize or understand. His role is not limited to a one-time event during our salvation, but He is continually involved in our sanctification, shaping us to be more like Christ every day. Without Him, our spiritual life would be weak, directionless and unfruitful. But with Him, we are empowered to live out our faith effectively, experience deep spiritual growth and impact others for God's kingdom. So let us commit to keep our hearts open and obedient to the Holy Spirit, valuing His presence and work in us more than anything else.